And this is about Quran. Alhamdulillah, Quran has a very strong connection with Ramadan. You know what happened when Quran came down? Quran would come down with angels. Angels would protect it when they would bring it down. Jibreel Amin would bring it down, but the angels would be protected. Because what the shaitan did before is he tried to influence those people who had the book so that they changed the book. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what he did? He is sending down Quran in a siege and a security of angels. It comes to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa it is secured, it is sealed, shaitan has nothing to do with it at the moment. Then the Prophet sallallahu passes it on to the companions. MashaAllah, this is where shaitan could come in. It cannot come to the Anbiya, but it can come to anybody else. Now what did Allah say to all of us? When you decide to pray Quran, what do you do? Fastaiz billah min ash rajim then seek refuge in Allah from shaitan. Why? Because this is where shaitan can influence. Shaitan can either stop you from praying or shaitan can make you pray incorrectly or if you understand, well firstly shaitan will stop you from understanding like he has done or even if you understand, shaitan can try to deviate you by bringing to you some false interpretations. And this is where this ummah has been misguided. Okay, the Quran does not change, but the interpretation of the Quran changes. So this is where shaitan comes in. And this is why Allah says that you have to protect yourself from shaitan even before you start praying Quran because shaitan does not want you to pray Quran. Shaitan does not want you to pray a lot of Quran. Shaitan does not want you to understand the Quran. Shaitan does not want you to implement on the Quran. So he will try to stop you in any way possible. Allah says, before you start, seek refuge in me so that I can protect you. And what happens in the month of Ramadan? Shaitan is not there. How many people pray Quran? Lows and lows. Those people who don't even touch Quran for the entire year, they start praying Quran. Why? Because the thing which was stopping them from praying Quran is not there anymore. So Alhamdulillah, shaitan is not there, our enemy is not there. Pray so much Quran that Alhamdulillah you become habitual. It becomes your, your, your habit that you cannot live without Quran, mashallah. And this will happen, believe me. This will happen when you get to a stage that when you don't open the Quran, you won't feel complete for that day. You will open the Quran even if you can't pray it, you will just open it, look at it and close it. But there will come a stage where this will happen. There does come a stage where mashallah, because you do so much zikr, you're always praying mashallah, you're traveling, you're praying, you're sitting here, you're praying, you're sitting at home, you're praying, you're watching news, you're still praying durood or you're doing any zikr. There will come a stage where even unintentionally, you don't even move your lips, but your zaban is doing zikr. And even this, at the stage above that is that your heart will do zikr inshallah. So alhamdulillah we need to get into the habit of these things in the month of Ramadan mashallah. Allah has given us this month. Make the most of it. Make the most of it. Because what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi said in a beautiful hadith that that person is a loser. You know our kids they say you are a loser and they say no you are a loser. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam is saying this person is a loser. Who is a loser? The one who receives Ramadan and still does not have himself forgiven. He is a loser. So if Ramadan arrives and still we don't have our sins forgiven, we are losers. And how will our sins be forgiven? You know, you read so many ahadiths. Last thing. You read so many ahadiths where the Prophet ﷺ said, you do Qiyam, your sins will be forgiven. You do Roza, your sins will be forgiven. But what sins are these? Remember, these are small sins. These are small sins. Which sins are not forgiven? The Kabai, the major sins. They too can be forgiven. How? I mean, if some of you think that, you know, I'm going to do a lot of good deeds in Ramadan, I'm going to wash away all my sins only to start my sins all over again on Eid day, 
If you have this intention that, you know, I'm going to pray till the end of Ramadan, but eat day, I've got some other plans. You know, I'm going on, on a day out with my friends and I won't be home all day, so I won't be able to pray. This is already your intention. You've not been to cinema for the whole month, but you have told your friends, you know what, as soon as Ramadan finishes, finishes book your tickets, inshallah. Astaghfirullah. We'll go, we'll go the second day after, after Eid. If this is your intention, you are not forgiven. How will you be forgiven? Two conditions. In the month of Ramadan, when you are doing a lot of good deeds, when you are staying away from sins, you should be ashamed of what you have done before. I used to listen to music. I disobeyed my parents. I did not pray namaz. I never touched the Quran. I was drinking alcohol. I was gambling. Astaghfirullah. You know how you feel remorseful in Ramadan? No, no, I don't want to do these things anymore. Okay? But the other thing is, one is to be ashamed of what you've done. The second is, you should promise yourself and you should promise Allah, I will try my best not to do it again. I will not do it again. I will not go there again. I will not touch it again. If this is the intention in the month of Ramadan, then inshallah, this is true tawbah and this will have all your sins forgiven, even the kabai, even the major sins. If you don't have this intention that, you know, even after Ramadan, I'm going to continue this. Or if you have the intention, as soon as Ramadan finishes, I'm going to go back to my old ways. That guna is still left. I'm missing it a lot. I'm going to do it. If you do this, if you have this intention, that guna will not be forgiven. So if you want, and if, it, if you're not forgiven, what is the Prophet ﷺ saying? You're a loser. So let us not be losers. Let us be winners. And Allah is helping us in every way to be a winner. So let us be winners in this Ramadan. Let us change ourselves for good and leave the rest to Allah. Our nafs might be strong. Shaitan might be strong. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the strongest in Shaitan. So we have our faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us steadfast in Ramadan and in our tawbah. Inshallah. Wa akhiru da'wana. And alhamdulillah.